All right, so this is going to be the trimming portion of the demo. Uh, before you get started, you're going to need a clean, dry wheel head and a wad of clay that's not too squishy, but just squishy enough. This is going to help us adhere our pot to the wheel. So make sure it's nice and dry, nice and clean, there's not anything on here, and we don't want to bat because we're going to use these rings that are on top of the wheel to help us. Oh, I dropped my bowls, that's okay. I saved two of them, so we're going to do one less demo than I fully intended to, but that's okay. That's okay. You'll, we'll get a good idea with the ones we have. Um, so first off, we want to make sure that our pot is dry enough. We are looking for leather hard. You should be able to tap it and touch it without it bending. Uh, this is going to be important because as we trim it, it's going to be easier to trim something that is just right and leather hard versus something that is dry because the dry one's going to give us a lot of trouble and the wet one is also alternatively going to give us trouble. So first off, we're going to go ahead and just line up our piece as best we can visually and then we're going to make some finger guns and hold those pretty level against our core. We're going to use that as a measurement. So every time that pot brushes against your finger on one spot a little bit more than the others, you're going to push away from that. So ideally we're looking for that fingertip to not get pushed. But if your fingertip gets pushed, then you know you need to push that pot a little bit away. And we're only doing little movements because it's really a, a little bit goes a long way when this is concerned. So from your wad of clay, you're going to take a little bit and coil it and put your hand firmly on the top to keep it from moving and then you're gonna push it down against the side of your piece. We don't want to push it into the piece, just adhere it to the wheel head. This is gonna keep our pot from moving around as we trim it and it's very important that we don't push it too far into our pot because it will like dent the side of your piece but if you just attach it loosely to the wheel head it'll just create like a little barrier for gravity to sort of push against and it'll keep it firmly on the wheel head. It's pretty easy. It's a simple, simple method. So I'm just double checking to make sure everything seems pretty level. And then I'm going to grab my trimming tool. It's going to look like um, this. It's going to have just a dowel rod with two sharp loops on the either end. You're going to have one that's a little more angular and one that's a little rounded. Um, before we even get started, we want to make sure our, our plane is pretty level. So using both of your hands to hold your piece steady you're going to move in just one motion and basically you're going to pull from the inside out and what we're doing here is we're just leveling the top we're not doing any hardcore trimming we just want to make it sort of even so that way when we really get into trimming it it's going to be easier to get an, a nice flat foot now I'm also doing the same thing to the side of the piece and just leveling the angle and taking off any excess material that's not going to help us. Um, so that way I can decide at this point when it's nice and even on all sides what kind of foot I'm looking for. And so I think for this one I'm going to do a teacup foot, that's what I call it. It's where it sort of angles in at the bottom and then rounds over and it's a little bit more narrow and it's a little bit closer and smaller in the center. Think uh, Chip from Beauty and the Beast. The kind of foot I'm going to make is the foot that he has. So I'm just cleaning off the edges here where any throw lines were left and that'll just create a nice even surface to sort of work with. Now I don't advise using one hand that's that's sort of like an advanced trick. I've got a lot of stability in my core because I've been doing this for a while. So until you are fully like confident in your ability to hold your arm steady, use both hands and brace one hand on the other. So I have decided how tall I want my foot and I did that by sort of measuring how thick the side is because I don't want to try to trim it in too far. 
because if I trim it in too far, it's going to be really easy to go through the side. So I'm just holding my trimming tool on this edge very lightly just so that it grazes over the top. It's sort of like slicing cheese in a way. We're not looking to really dig into it. We're just trying to take off a thin layer. And notice how those trimmings are just really coming off nicely and not getting stuck on my pot. That's how I know this is about the right set of dryness. If it were to stick or flake, if, if it were to flake, then it would be too dry. But if it were to stick, then it would be too wet. And we sort of play that funny vice versa game. This is a, a system of like Goldilocks and the three bears. We're looking for what's just right. So right now I'm just sort of trimming off for how wide I want my foot and how I want the bowl to interact with it. If you've got to sort of think about whether or not you want your foot to go straight down or to kind of curve in. Now that I've sort of decided on my height, I am going into that center area and pulling out slowly to a thickness, take out that middle ring essentially. And notice how thick that foot is. That's about a quarter of an inch. That's a pretty decent sized foot. I wouldn't go any smaller than that right now or until you've done this for a while, uh, just because it's gonna, you're, it, you're, the tendency is gonna be to make a, a foot that's either too big or too small. So try to aim for this thickness at least for any shape foot for the time being. So when I'm done sort of getting the shape I want, I'm gonna use the back of my wooden tool and I use my middle finger and my forefinger to sort of like put just a very light pressure on it and what I'm doing is essentially just compressing the edge much like we would do when we were working with slabs. Um, I'm just doing it with the narrow point of my wooden tool and this is going to make a nice smooth bottom and clean it up so it's not scratchy or sharp or ridged. It's got a nice edge. And I've sort of decided I think I can go a little bit lower, like I think I can make my foot a little bit taller. So I'm just trimming off a little more excess to create a little bit more height for my foot. And at this point in throwing is where you're going to figure out whether or not you've thrown an even pot or it was centered at all because you can sort of feel it you'll you'll be able to feel the wobble much more significantly here now I've pulled out my other trimming tool this one's a little bit sharper um, it's also got a wider edge and I'm using that just to get a nice clean cut I like this one because it's got these really narrow triangular points and on the narrow the more narrow your 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 trimming tool or your the, the space you're pulling from is the more like fine and detailed your cut can be. And if you need a more narrow point than what you've got, you can definitely go out and buy a, like a better trimming tool. Um, a really cheap version is if you go to Hobby Lobby and the doll section, they've got these little, they look like your needle tools, but they're just little metal loops. And I think those are really good starter trimming tools. I think sometimes that bigger loop will mess you up. but. I like this sort of narrow angle I get from this particular tool. So at this point I am just double checking and I'm cleaning off any extra boogers and I'm making it sort of just nice because we like a nice foot. And I'm just checking on the edge and how it sort of responds. Um, and what I'm mo motioning for is I'm want to just be sure that I'm not trimming too much because it's very easy to just go ham and take out the entire middle of the pot and then you end up with a planter because it's got a hole in the bottom. We're not looking for planters. We're trying to make a bowl. So before you pick it up, make sure you take off those lugs and you're just going to squeeze it back into a bowl because we can keep using this. Um, when you pick it up, make sure to pick it up from the center, not the edge, and not the base. 
Now it looks like it hit on one of those notches, so I've got a little cut in the side of my bowl. That's okay, it's not a big deal. It's not, it's not ideal, but you know, if I were more careful, that wouldn't have happened. So what I'm doing now is I'm just checking to make sure I didn't create any really thin spots or weak points, and I didn't trim through the base. And once again, pick it up from the center and not the foot you just trimmed or the edge, because those are gonna be pretty weak points. Specifically, that foot is gonna be really soft and that rim is gonna be really dry. And at this point, you know, if it's leather hard, you can just go ahead and set it on your shelf without being covered. Uh, it, it'll dry pretty nicely. Um, unless you wanna do some sort of design on it, I would then, if that's the case, I would go ahead and wrap it up. So that way you can keep it nice and at the perfect, you know, leather hard is honestly the best sort of wetness or moisture level for doing any sort of detail work. If you wanna trim it, if you wanna carve into it, if you wanna paint on it, that's the best time to do it. So just like before, I am just trying to get my piece centered. You got a finger gun and then double check to see if it bumps against that finger gun. And it's really important to keep your finger level. Um, if you pull it in close to your body, it'll be easier to keep it from like shaking all over. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect, obviously, but get as close as you can because that foot's gonna reflect how off center you are. So when you go to put your lugs on, and I might not have mentioned this before, you know, hold your hand firm on the top and then do one side and then do the opposite side. So that way you can sort of leave it be and do the, the other side's left. So that way it doesn't shift while you're trying to get everything sort of situated. So for this particular bowl, I'm looking for a more, what I call a modern foot. So think um, straight lines, really, really straight lines. So this one's gonna be a tall foot and I'm gonna go straight up and down. So with this one, like, and you're gonna do this with every piece, the first thing you wanna do, doesn't, don't go ahead and start looking for the shape, level it out. Clean up those edges, clean up any like sharp corners or unevenness on the top. We wanna make sure we level it out before we even really bother trying to go in and make a shape. So, for this particular foot, I'm gonna need to take it in a pretty significant amount, but it's important that I don't try to do that very quickly. We wanna take our time on this because if I were to try to scrape off too much now, that, that tool will get lodged in the side of the pot and then the pot will like pop itself off the wheel and hit against the sides of the splash pan. So we really just wanna do it very, very slowly and progressively here. We wanna take our time. That way we get the shape we're looking for without risking any loss. And once again, we know this pot is pretty pretty good as far as moisture levels are concerned because as I'm trimming, all of those little spirals are just peeling away. And that's what we're looking for. That's the big indicator that we've got the right moisture level. Once again, I'm gonna reiterate, do not one-handed trim until you are fully comfortable that your hand is steady enough to not wiggle all over the place. Other than, if you do that, you'll get sort of like, um, I think it's called chattering. It'll look like um, ridges or like bevels.
So what I'm motioning towards is how the foot interacts with the side of the pot. Do I want it 